Vicky visiting us from Brown University, and he's going to talk about bilocal holography in the session of Great, uh, nice to be here. Always try seeing old friends and uh, this beautiful building. It's so <coughs> fantastic. Uh, let's see. I'm not totally sure. Yeah. So this will be the overview of what I will be discussing. Uh, first, I'll just comment on um, the type of holography that we are having in in in, in this talk. Um, the fact that it is. <coughs> Vectorial means vector type models as opposed to or compared to the more, more well known or more, more celebrated Young Mills type holography with string theory. This would be typically vector models with some other theories on the dual, on the dual side. And in this case, there is a particular way to actually constructively implement holography. So in a way, it is a, <coughs> not holography at all, but a construction of the dual theory. But after I just make some initial comments on that, um, I'll discuss the actual model, which, which is the topic of the talk. The model, this SYK model, such the ADA guitar model, is, is really an attempt to understand holography in a very low dimension. In, in, in a way, the lowest number of dimensions possible. If you take into account that you would like to have a model which has gravity, with the gravity dual, and you would like to have a model which will have black hole, black hole type state, which, which can be tested in the model. So in some sense, this might be the model, the simplest model, ADS CFT with a black hole, which is how Kitai uh, has, has suggested it. Uh, the way to solve it is through the large variety of large N methods, which are always present in any any of these dualities, ADS CFT. And, and recently, this this beginning of this year, there have been several groups that made the kind of a systematic attack at this large end problem of the model. So I'll, I'll describe just the work done on the ground by these two students, Kento Suzuki and Yu And here is that global <coughs> comment on vectorial duality, which started with the suggestion by Clevero and Polikov for bosons, and then uh, uh, Elgin Seskin and Pera Sandel made a big contribution with the fermionic analog, which also resulted in a dual Vasilev type theory. What is characteristic of this model, either with bosons or fermions, but those are vector under ON and UN, they are the celebrated critical phenomena models in if the dimension is three, so those are very well known field theories, which won a Nobel Prize in, in dimension three. In dimension two, those are conformal field theories, again, very, very well known. So these are the type of field theories that we know the best, um, especially at these two points where, where <coughs> they are conformally invariant. And the dual theory, even though it was known a little bit less, but in the last 15 years, especially with uh, respect to this duality, has been further studied. And the virtues are many uh, among those that uh, it's not a string theory. It exists in all dimensions without supersymmetry and no critical dimension. So it is really a uh, novel <coughs> uh, case of uh, gravity. <coughs> which we believe is absolutely consistent and exists in a fairly large number of dimensions. But what I'll be doing is going down to less than that. But before I do, let me mention this constructive, a very simple way to understand holography or this full duality in this case. It is based on the fact that invariants of the model, of the CFT, 
are, can be completely stated in terms of this by local phi i of x, phi i of x1 and x2, that defines, after you I have a drawing i, that defines a by local observable. This by local observable has two features one that it is closed under large and swing, one over n swing and I swing equations. It, it also has another feature that if you expand, then it generates a whole set of infinite, an infinite set of kind. And actually more than that. Um, but the final feature is that you can exactly rewrite the theory, the original integral over phi i, in terms of this dual psi. And the rewriting is very simple. It involves the the action for the dual. The action for the dual or for the psi is just the original action, which is typically easy to rewrite in terms of these this observables. If it's a phi phi to the fourth theory, then it's just psi squared. And if there is a kinetic term here in psi. And the major the, the major term is this extra phase law psi, which I just call entropy. But the statement is that this partition, this functional integral or that field is equal to the original functional integral with the other field. So that has been proven a long time ago and in connection with doing large gem for this type of vector models. Anton, you're integrating over 3x in that formula, d3xl. Uh, d so, no, in the exponent. Yeah, the, the first, that yeah. one. Yeah. Th this was just so what is L then? This then? this is example, this is whatever your CFT is. Ah. So, so this term is just, just the free plus whatever CFT. Right. right. So it will be oh, infrared phi to the fourth theory. But the fields depend on three coordinates, not six. Uh, that's right. This is a D three L. How do you define that in terms of X one and X two? Oh, that, uh, no, no, that's it. that's trivial, you know, phi of X derivative phi of x obviously is nothing but derivative of x1, derivative of x2 or psi of x1, x2. So there is no, or for phi dot phi squared, and you'll see today a couple of examples. It's nothing but psi of xx, meaning local squared. Okay. You know, so, so that, that is, that's because the Lagrangian is O M invariant, so. It, it just has one of the lowest, simplest mm -hmm. invariants of okay. this kind. So it, it, that's not, uh, that, that's, since that's trivial. This term is a bit non trivial because the, the, the trace and log implied uh, of psi, you think of this as a matrix, so that would be a star product. Since high spin here is lost star products. That Absolutely. But uh, the map we have worked out in a number of papers in the last 10 years, and uh, I described it in many meetings where we were together with Elgin. So, uh, the idea is absolutely simple. We would like to identify this with a set of highest speed fields, a whole sequence, a linear sequence. First, you would like to translate these six dimensions of the bilocal into four of ABS and somehow package physical data of highest pins into an S2. And there is a beautiful group theory behind this formula, which as when I started, I did not really know well. But now I've actually finished and constructed things explicitly and mapping. There is a nice group theory among those is Plato, Franz Dahl, but also generalization of the, this, describing action of a conformal group on ABS4 cross S2. That, that's a nice, nice description of a sigma model. But apart from the kinematics, that's just part number one. These fields are to obey nonlinear equations. Um, with a coupling constant g. And then uh, when I say mapping, I imply both the kinematics and then the nonlinear dynamics is fully captured by 
that previous Lagrangian. With this one, just like that. So, so it is a version of higher spin theory. And uh, as far as the dynamics is concerned, it consists in finding the minima of, of that collective action, and, and much like reality, and then studying fluctuations with quadratic term being the propagator, and uh, this would be the vertex. And obviously, all these terms, since the terms here are linear in psi, or at best quadratic in psi, these terms, which are in the original action, they don't even contribute to the vertices of cubic kind in this dual theory. This is solely coming from that trace long. So all the higher vertices, cubic and arm, are just coming from the trace long. You just expand the trace long, and you got your vertices. And it can be proven that you recover with these rules. You will recover the correlation function of the original model. This is just uh, almost a sermon I give more of the time. Huh? But uh, what will happen now, we will be studying a, a, a simple model where, yes? Maybe before we get into that, I just have kind of a conceptual question. Yeah. Um, in these models, the ON symmetry is a global symmetry. So we, a priori, you wouldn't have to restrict to the single that, that's right. So is it, is it a, it's a choice? And it is a choice, and there is maybe some, some expect, some maybe actual expectation you might have that these other angular degrees of freedom are caged degrees of freedom. Uh, there might be a way to, it's also the restriction to the singlet is some kind of Gauss, Gauss law condition, Gauss restriction, and the, the non singlets might be caged this That's how it was understood, at least in one model, which we studied long ago in the case of a 1D to 2D non critical string correspondence. That's what it came to. Yeah. So the yeah. ABJM model, though, by introducing Chern Simon term, you achieved that condition, right? Uh, or not? That's right. There are various so ways. Have you considered generalizing your model to introduce Chern Simon yeah. interactions? We could. I somehow didn't. So I can't see that it helped me much for solving what. But well, that would have been to this question. It, right? would, it yeah. would be related. Yeah. That would be one. Yeah. John Simons kind of implements that then through a Gauss law condition. So it, it becomes a little bit more natural. But you introduced the John Simons, so it, I wonder whether it is more natural. But anyway, it's a very, one way to understand. So you can embed the John Simons couple. Let me now go. So even though these models and these higher spin theories exist in any dimension, which is one of the beauties, and they, they lately they have been studied in higher dimension. Klebanov and Yambi have done very nice work in higher dimensional theories, five, six. Uh, uh, nevertheless, I will go to this case, which is not stated there, which is D for one. Because somehow, when I wrote this first transparency, I didn't think D for one is that interesting. But it became interesting this last year. So, so D for one. D for one, there is a particular model that has been the center of attention lately. This is the subset mean entire model introduced uh, to mimic. Uh, Behavior electrons in a metal, <coughs> then such that I realized maybe it has some ADS2 being D equal one, it might have an ADS2 interpretation. Tyler really took that on and proposed a slightly simpler version uh, and it did make a large contribution by identifying some gravitational dynamics in this model. He also evaluated what is called the lacuna exponent, which is one, one of the tests we have to see whether the, 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 the model might have at finite temperature black, black hole type uh, states of physics. Last this year, there have been a series by this and other authors of very detailed calculations to reproduce 
those results which were pronounced by Kikai on his YouTube talks. So, so that, that, that the calculations which I'll be describing are just uh, along that line to try to solve the model. And uh, this, that, that has been papers by Korczynski and several papers by Matisena. <coughs> So here is the model, and uh, this is how this is, it, it, this is the extreme simplicity that you have a random coupling, J I J K L, which is anti symmetric, the rank for the transfer. And this uh, fermions originally in the such that are Lili, but Kital made, made them Majorana fermions, so they are self conjugate. A uh, little bit strange thing to think quantum mechanically as a Hilbert space. But uh, as a functional integral over those, those are just standard anti-computing Grassmann variables. So easy to imagine integrating over the fermions. And J is a random, random distribution with a Gaussian rate. But that would have made this type of models even more difficult because what what you have to average is not the a partition function in this model, in, in this random averaging, you would have to average the free energy, which can be converted to partition function by this trick of taking z to the power n and averaging minus 1 and then dividing by n to recover the log. This is called the replica trick, where you now reduce the problem to averaging the, the partition function, which is what you like to do. So in that case, you would just do an integral with j i j k, would have observables, and this Gaussian then can be done because we are averaging the functional integral. And if you integrate over, over the Gaussian, these were the kinetic terms of those fermions, and there was a quartic coupling to j, but j was a Gaussian, that gets squared. So after J is integrated out, you have essentially two fermions to the power four. That's eight because you have integrated out that that uh, random ra random average over J. The price to pay is this fact that you have copied the fermions into. Died. Yeah. You have copied the fermions into n little n copies, apart from the fact that there is capital N, which we had originally for the practice. So, so now we have two n's. But now it is purely a vector type model with two, with the replica variable going from one to little n, and with the original site variable called going from does work it's at the right with the site variable which uh, goes from one to capital so it is a vector type model and there is a further simplification because what we need is as far as the replicas are concerned is only the m going to zero limit the other capital M will be going to infinity. So it's a double limit. But as far as M going to zero limit, you have to just keep the contributions, which will be of order M and not of order N squared or higher, to the, to the free energy. And that allows you essentially, that, that means that if you have not purposely broken the replica symmetry, if you are in the replica symmetric phase, we, we can establish whether in this model, actually there is no chance for replica symmetry breaking. So if you are in this phase of replica symmetric things, then that means that, uh, sorry, that means that you will be diagonal in the replica space, and replica will not play a role. And it becomes just a simple model of n-component fermions with that quartic or, or 
or, or action which had an eight power. And that means that I can, in this case, rewrite the problem in terms of the bilocal or the fermions. So that is our favorite variable. And we come again to that action, which uh, uh, Elgin writes. So as he would say, oh, all roads lead to Rome. We are back to we are back to this action which which I was advertising, which is kind of general. The only difference for this model is that it is kind of in one dimension, so it is double time. Now it's only time which is doubled. Looks fairly trivial. There was a eight, eight order interaction in the Lagrangian, and now it is fourth order in uh, my, my, my local field. There was a kinetic term for the fermions, which was quadratic in the fermions, but now it's just linear. So it is a it is, it, it, it is as all the other cases that we have studied for the highest spin correspondence. And uh, this is the action to study. Well, and feed factors out in front of the Lagrangian, so it serves as a coupling constant. That's the virtue of rewriting it in terms that's the that's why this collective Lagrangian is relevant to the problem of understanding large n and duality, because then Coupling constant is one over n. If this, whatever you do with this Lagrangian, you'll be only able to expand to one over n or one over j. Both will be relevant. One over n will be the gravitational constant that's always in the in, in duality, and one over j will be interesting. J is a dimension full parameter. There will be J going to infinity, that will be a strong coupling limit. And that's where the infrared critical point will be. So if I can now just summarize what went on. We have, after getting rid of replicas and getting rid of random averaging, we have basically a, an interaction of eight order. And that became, uh, in terms of a highly bilocal interaction, maximally by local, uh, but of fourth order. We had the kinetic term of fermions, which is now just linear in that by local field. And we had that all more relevant entropy contribution. They're all in the large end. They're all of the same, of the same order. And therefore, to solve the large end theory, we will have to find the stationary point of this action to find the spectrum of the theory, we'll have to go to a quadratic approximation, expand. And all the papers that I refer to are, are doing all, you know, Pochiski and us and what the same are doing precisely that. Everyone is doing the same thing. Just I'll, I'll emphasize what maybe the interpretation is slightly different and the techniques of solving are slightly different, but everyone is I want to just mention that this action is telling me everything. Everyone is first finding the stationary point and then going to quadratic level after shifting by the stationary point, identifying the quadratic term that would be the propagator of this by local, and then studying that propagator. That that is what so in that we all agree that we are to study that. And that and then the cubic term would give you a 1 over n vertex for any 1 over n perturbation. But the first thing which happens, happens in that infrared, there is an infrared critical point, which comes when j is infinite. And that comes, one can scale j appropriately so that it comes out of here as 1 over j. So and that is typical in critical phenomena that the kinetic term of your original theory becomes irrelevant. Then that's um, well known. So if you just drop that term, this term will be called S C as opposed to the full action, which will be S collective. And S C, which is the critical infrared theory, 
you have some very interesting properties right, right now, immediately just before you must start solving it. One of the properties is a symmetry, which will be a total reparameterization of time, which is surprising. You, you expect in the infrared, at the infrared critical point, you accept, you expect scale and conformal symmetry. But in this case, the symmetry is extended or enlarged into full reparameterizations, surprisingly. But t can be replaced by f of t, and since we have two times that, f of t1 and f of t2, that is a symmetry of this action. So once again, if I <coughs> drop the kinetic term and identify something which I see this is wrong, this is just sc as opposed to the other one, which I call s. Oh. This action has this symmetry of reparameterization of, of the time by arbitrary functions of f of t1 and f of t2. Such symmetry that it might appear in the infrared critical point, and this is the central observation, which was uh, which was suggested by Kitayo, and you might find it somewhere in his video. Uh, that I don't know what where he got it from, but he suggested that there is such a parameterization symmetry in the theory. He was not looking at this model, not this version of the model. Maybe he did because we don't know his notebook. So. Now, it will play a, a very big role. So, so I just want to mention that, that it's very visible immediately. Now, back to just, just solving the model. So this is how, how it goes. In this case, you say, fine, I, I find the, the minimum. And again, this is just directly at the infrared critical point because it is very difficult to solve the model away from and I will make comments on that. At the infrared critical point directly, when I have only two terms in the action and drop the kinetic term, this leads to an easy scaling solution with the power of one over one half. This is the, dynamic, the new scaling dimension at the infrared. There is also a finite temperature solution the model is put at finite temperature with a periodic time. Just replace t by tangent t or beta. This gives you a periodic solution, which is a finite temperature solution. It will make a, this, this, this replacement will appear and play a role later. You can find the free energy that way by just plugging back into the action. And then, you know, you are, so it's fairly easy. and. All the discussion up to at this point is in the strict infrared critical point. And um, you go and expand around that critical value phi zero, the background. You expand the trace log. You will get these are really inverses of matrices. We have psi zero. It was a matrix because it was not by local. You have to. This, this is not just one over whatever we had there. This is the inverse of that matrix. And there are two terms in the kinetic term. J can be scaled out after you take into account the powers of J. Uh, there is psi 0 minus 1, psi 0 inverse matrix, and psi 0, psi 0. So this looks like a fairly non-local kernel, quadratic kernel, initial by local T1, T2, final by local T1, T3. So what we are doing is now basically constructing this, studying how to construct that properly. Uh, if we can find the eigenfunctions and eigenvalues of the kernel which sits here. And that requires, is helped by a little bit of group theory which you might, you might have guessed. And let me jump immediately to the math. In this case, we only have T1 and T2. It is very trivial to say it's always the center of mass, which is the dual time. That's obvious. And Z, which is the ATS coordinate, is nothing but the difference. So there is not, nothing much here. There are no highest that you don't you know this. You might think this model is will be absolutely trivial, but you will be surprised. Okay. So, 
Now, that, that is surprised actually because, and uh, even this, uh, so to solve the quadratic fluctuations, you might think that, uh, that the, the Casimir or Casal II will play a role. That's typically the Laplacian in ADS space. But we have a Laplacian in bilocal space. So back to that. But the bilocal Casimir, which is obtained by two copies of translation scale and conformal transformations, after you square that, and you will not get, you will not be surprised, and that is just a confirmation that this map makes sense. That by local Casimir becomes this this uh, ADS Casimir. So that is the kinematics in this case. That is very simple and obvious, and that is one way, and the most convincing way to see that holography can be kind of holography. I, I, as I said, in all my papers. Uh, in the last year or so or two, I used the word choreography, but I don't think that is choreography. Obviously, you can account for every single degree of freedom, every single bulk degree of freedom that there is in gravity from CFT. So I don't know what choreography. If we are lazy, we might study the theory as z equals zero, but that's not. The C is the radial variable. That's right. That's and there's the, also angular this, this variable. Is the, this is, no, this is ADS2, so just T and Z. Oh, sorry. Not T and ADS3. Z. Oh, sorry, sorry, of course. But, yes. uh, maybe we'll get to ADS3 if we. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, maybe was, that would, might be a surprise. Mm -hmm. But at this point, from T1 and T2, mm -hmm. just two, two dimensions. And there's no quote unquote higher spin. There, there's, no, there's no visible higher spin in this case. Okay. In the topological one. No, no. You don't expect this would be so. So the solution is, as you would expect, for ADS2, the wave function you might try would be a Bessel function. Or the precise the same kind as, first of all, e to the i omega energy t1 plus t2. But this is the variable z, and anyone who looked at Rate functions in ADS space, those are just the same Bessel functions. Maybe a strange linear combination, but that will be explained later. And the complete set, I will skip this discussion, or I will just state the result, which was really, <coughs> that was a paper by Torchinsky and Rosenhaus to find this complete spectrum of that kernel. Actually, I found another kernel this one for the propagator is related to it. So if we constructed the present one, it's related to they have the same wave functions and the same states. There will be mu is the scaling dimension, which appears always in this correspondence. That will be the scaling dimensions of operators which will appear in, in uh, in, in the CFT. And you find the following spectrum. You find the continuum, and then set of discrete values for mu starting from three halves and onwards, and is 0, 1, 2, 3. And the propagator then is just simple. And you find the eigen value of that kernel, the Laplacian. So here, here then is the propagator. You have the eigenvalue of the kernel, you have the sum over the eigenvalues mu, which appear here, and you have the wave functions, which appear here. So in all respect, this would be then the, the propagator, some kind of propagator in ADS to space time. But usually, for a scalar field, we just have one fixed mu, one fixed scaling dimension, which corresponds to the mass of the scalar in ADS. Now the surprise is that we have a sum, okay? sum over a sequence of scaling energy. But um, apart from that, you, there is actually another problem. One of the scaling dimensions, which is 3 half, and 
this number three halves is visible in those YouTube talks by Kitai. He knows about three halves, but we don't know where, where does he know it from. And so this later, later papers that just basically show where it comes from. The three half number which corresponds to n equals zero is such that that pole, that, that, that is a pole. The denominator, which had that function cotangent pi mu over two when the plug in three halves, it has one, but we have g minus one. So this propagator at that one value, and there is an infinite set of contributions, infinite set of masses, at that one value, it just doesn't exist. It blows up because you put n equals zero. This is three half, g is one, one minus one is zero. So the propagator doesn't exist. Apart from that, this is a fairly complicated looking propagator, but it uh, doesn't exist. So it is here that that symmetry of which the model has, which I emphasized, the symmetry, the conformal symmetry of that Lagrangian, or the, the effective Lagrangian by local Lagrangian, which says that if psi zero is a solution of the equations of motion, uh, which we found, that was the background, then so is psi zero transformed by an arbitrary function t. And that means this would also be a solution. And that implies, if you take a derivative of psi zero with respect to phi, that this function u found this way and will be a, a zero mode of the, of the quadratic kernel. This is a version of a Goldstone theorem associated with this symmetry. And you can easily check that indeed you take a derivative of that uh, background, you will get precisely the wave function, the vessel function, the half of which, which was the cause of that, that zero mode graph. And this problem indeed is known in subatomic physics. And uh, uh, I wrote them long ago. And uh, recently, Andy Royston and Greg Moore had a nice application of that for DPS type of states in string theory. So it is a problem which is fairly familiar. Nevertheless, it was not familiar even to maybe not the same at Stanford. Because here is what they did, which is all fine. Just that maybe one can do better, which maybe I will try to show. One, one way to, 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 to deal with it is just to say, oh, I, I, I don't see precisely at this critical CFT, the at the infrared point, which is where we usually want to be when we discuss EDS CFT correspondence. So you say, let me just add that breaking term and go away from the critical point. And the breaking term, you remember, was just the linear term in, in the effective uh, action description. We had the infrared piece, and that was the breaking term. If you scale j, this will scale as 1 over j. So it would be, in that strong coupling limit, this would be negligible. But they said, let's, if, I, if we add the symmetry breaking term so that we are not at the conformal point, but let's say that we'll be now near the conformal point, and we'll not have a zero mode, but we'll be near, the z yeah, we'll have a slightly enhanced zero mode, that will solve the problem. And indeed it does. So they uh, try to evaluate this perturbation leads to a shift of the eigenvalue by delta lambda. And I did uh, you know, an evaluation of the shift of the eigenvalue, which was 0. And I found this answer. Uh, I described what I did in this page, which was simple. But that required 30 pages of that paper, I put in a valiant effort to evaluate the number alpha k, because all the other numbers are semi-visible. The number alpha k, we're not able to solve for the new background, 
the new background you have to now find with away from the infrared you are not in the domain of conformal field theory you you look, you have this breaking term you can solve perturbatively that I do, did that numerically and I did some evaluation of the eigenvalue numerically so by a series of two numerical sequence of two numerical works they found this 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 uh, um, shift of the zero mode due to the infrared breaking. And that's why that this is what they got. And this is relevant to our discussion. So we had the non-zero modes, those are all fine. And then that precise zero mode, and this is an error, this is the mu equal three half wave function which sits there, and that value will change from zero to delta lambda as they have evaluated. If you translate that into some kind of Lagrangian for this mode or this coordinate, it would be just delta out. That's the propagator inverse for delta out times some degree of freedom, one to mechanical, epsilon of t, epsilon of t. Wasn't the t the, the three house for, for n equals zero? That's right. That was the and isn't delta lambda the formula for delta lambda is proportional to n? Well, that's a different time. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, yeah, this, this, sorry. This is the n conjugate to time uh, as a Fourier yeah. transform, but they put it in a box. It should be called omega rather than n. That's that's also also what you have you are right. Right. So it was not. There was no need to call it n. I would call it omega. That is the original notation for energy conjugate to time. But this would be the Lagrangian, and it just happens that for that symmetry mode, which I emphasized in the beginning, Kitayev again in his videos has guessed that there would be a, an action, which is of this kind, the Schwarzian derivative, which comes from you know, transformation of the energy momentum tensor, as we are familiar from the form field theory. And this is what Kitayev suggested. If you perform a linearized approximation of this Schwarzian action, you will indeed agree. So, But what the major accomplishment was this coefficient, which Mendelsena and, and uh, they found because it's related to delta L and that prefactor of delta. Now let me just shortly describe how you know, when, uh, a little bit of our work because I said you can do better or more fully that are just in a way some kind of quadratic approximation to the treatment of this mode. The, the better is, is that, that way of how we dealt with collective coordinates or coordinates for solitons. In that case, it, you know, it's interesting sometimes in physics that you might meet the situation that the story repeats itself say, should I work on this? This is identical to what I did 30 years ago. So uh, do I need to write a paper? Indeed, we, we, we in our paper, we this what I'm telling you, uh, we, we just made a comment that that problem was solved long ago. And the paper was accepted, but the referee said, you know, what do you mean solved long ago? Why don't you spell it out? So we then spelled it out, repeating of what we did long ago. But uh, here is the spelling out of that. For the case of solitons, if there was a symmetry degree of freedom, the way we end up was a sign that the coordinate, that's the moduli problem of, of not only solitons, but many of these extended or, 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 or classical solutions of states. Uh, that you need to introduce a collective coordinate because after all, soliton will have a dynamical coordinate. So it is a sign that you should introduce a dynamical coordinate into the problem. And this very simple way is borrowed from Fade and Popov, where you say here is this coordinate, f of t, which I will introduce through the unity. But there is a delta function which will project out something from the existing theory. That obviously will be that mode which caused the trouble. So the idea is very simple, to trade off the troublesome zero mode by projecting it out in favor of the coordinate of the cycle. 
And that also specifies the measure, and this is an exact rewriting. So at the end, we end up with a bilocal field and the dynamical coordinate f of t and an action for both, which contains some interaction between the two, but also the projector. So, so we projected out the zero mode, but you ended up with a dynamical field f of t. And you know, for for okay, so this is this would be a poor way, for poor man's way of getting some gauge degree of freedom in the theory, because this, this now becomes a gauge theory, which will be, a, you, you, you'll, you'll see. This becomes that matter, you can think of this matter, and this will be gravity, poor man's gravity, as I will try to explain. But nevertheless, the combined action will be now a little bit gauge invariant. It will be invariant under that parameterization. In a way, it is... Which the parameterization? Of time? Uh, of time. Of time. Yes. So, what was the connection between that and the original Bowen symmetry? Because it's all coming from the fact that you have a bio at this point, right? At this point, that is not visible. It might be a thing to establish. I, I just hinted on that, but I, I didn't do much along that line. I just suspect that is a bad thing. Maybe from the, from the other of the trick, can you explain where the bilocality is coming from? No, bilocality you see was already there. This I am this I am placing into the bilocal integral. Yeah. So so it's already there. So I didn't do much, I just added, I kicked out one of the bad modes and replaced it by this. So it's just a trade-off. In the bilocal realm. But it also hints to okay. Back to then evaluating the action for this degree of freedom, which itself is a non-trivial thing, as I said, in a way, for just the linearized version of the action, there was a huge effort by Matosena and company. So the action should be now found by this, this method, just by taking the background at f of t, plugging into that breaking term. This will give you the action. If you plug it in, you will get the divergence. You have to really go to the infrared point. That's very difficult. Anyone who did calculation in critical phenomena knows that you cannot calculate anything directly. Wilson and Fisher used the epsilon expansion where they perturbed from a point where they knew the answer to the point D, so D for four, they knew how to do renormalization group calculations, and they wanted to go to D for three. So that's the D, so, 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 so D minus F, F, that's the epsilon expansion. In this case, we used some, so let's say thus, so we didn't, I didn't, I don't even know how to do things numerically, so, so we had to do it analytically. Uh, and the, 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 the method which saved us is, is an epsilon expansion. You remember the power four? That is our problem, or, or that, that, that is the infrared point. If you replace it by power two, that is also one of the such that models, simple model. That model is exactly solved. So the idea is then to perturb from two to four by two plus epsilon expansion. But it's not really two, epsilon would be two, you might think, but if it's divided by four, then it is two over four, then it is one half, epsilon would be one half. So we did that expansion in epsilon, which ultimately would be one half. And it turned out that if we expand that way, as in critical phenomena for the epsilon expansion in the little bits of Fisher, we found precisely that towards an action in the complete exact form, closed form. And we also found the coefficient here, which was turned out to be one minus epsilon squared. As far as we analyze, there are no corrections. I don't know how rather lucky or what sounds lucky to me. I still don't believe that there are no, no other corrections. We could compare with the numerical work. And, uh, 
the value we have is just three quarters for that coefficient alpha. And uh, the curve here is R, epsilon expansion curve. The other curve is the numerical curve of Montesena and Sanford. At Q equal four, they, they kind of totally agree miraculously. Uh, that's why we, were, we want to go. And at Q equal four, their value is 756, which is close to evaluating this at uh, epsilon equal one half, which is, I guess, three quarters is 0.75. So I attribute this six to numerical error. If they do a much more careful numerical analysis and they found that maybe that stands, then maybe we have higher epsilon corrections. But at this point, this is, anyway, it's pretty good for at least the time being. So, so that action, the, the, the Schwarzian action, can be found then exactly. And then the conclusion is that uh, we, we have the propagator, the zero mode is kicked out, and we have that Schwarzian action. Uh, you, you referred to time. There are many issues with respect to that f of t, now, now dynamical coordinate. It will be gravity. It is two-dimensional gravity. And uh, I'll give you the references, but you can look up that analysis. So since I am running out of time, I'll just now summarize what we know about the rest of the story of what the idea is. What is. So indeed, you can think of that if you invert f of t to t of f, that will be precisely the time coordinate, a dynamical time coordinate. And the conjugate, it looks like a, a higher derivative Lagrangian diagram. We know how to deal with high derivative Lagrangian. So you can find the Hamiltonian. And this is, in a way, the Hamiltonian of the theory. You might wonder whether this highly bilocal theory has a notion of a Hamiltonian. And uh, here, uh, the notion of a Hamiltonian in gravity is related to one conserved quantity, which the gravity has. Here is the conserved quantity which, which it has. It's highly bilocal. Uh, th this is just the, 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 much like the coordinate of a soliton x of t, its conjugate gives you the momentum. In this case, this gives you the energy. It's not bilocal. This is extra to the bilocal. It couples to the bilocal. Much like in gravity, the gravitational field couples to matter. But nevertheless, the gravitational field measures the energy. So like, like that, in this case also. And for example, solution is that function which was used for finite temperature. Um, the same Lagrangian uh, was derived actually earlier from ABS dilaton gravity of the Jacquet Titan boy type, so which has basically no degrees of freedom. It is studied by Polchinski and Almeri near um, the, 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 some, some fixed value for the dilaton. At the, as they call boundary. So this, this dilaton gravity, the Jacquet title one gravity, if you just put a cutoff on the dilaton field, will have just that degree of freedom which you have on that, on that, that cutoff. They, they have found this Lagrangian, the Schwarzian Lagrangian. So that basically is equal to that once you fix a conformal gauge and go to that value of the dilaton. Uh, this was found again by a number of people lately to just argue that this SYK model, therefore, shows that one degree of freedom, the Schwarzian degree of freedom, that that obviously is a gauge fixed version of, of the, the 2D Jacquet Title I dilaton gravity. So that would be the gravity side, and that's why I have to tackle. Uh, Without the kinetic term for phi. Uh, the, uh, there is no kinetic, yeah, that, that, that's right. That, there might have been a kinetic term for phi. That, that might require that analysis. Yeah. It's all repeated a couple times by several authors. So, uh, so if you are, want to see the details, that's the place to look at. But let me then go to matter. So that we, we said f of t coupled to the bilocal, the bilocal is the matter, 
But when we diagonalized that propagator, we found a sequence of an, you know, dimen scaling dimensions. I call them PM. The scaling dimensions are very strange. They are not as nice as in high spin theory, where the scaling dimensions are 1 plus s, where it's just a linear sequence. This replaces that statement. These are the scaling dimensions of these degrees of freedom which we found in that propagator, that by local propagator had an infinite set. And it, in a way, so it is ADS2. <coughs> but uh, if I like to translate to you what that propagator, and this is that question of non-locality. In this case, indeed, that kernel is highly non-local in bi-local space. And if you translate to ADS, it corresponds to matter like this. You have ADS, D and Z, the scalar field, but the product over ADS Laplacians with growing masses with that, uh, that, that scaling dimensions. So the question then is, Sirkin, did you see that ever? Those kind of scaling dimensions in this equation? We all see it in quantum mechanics, but not in compactifications of the loser prime. So I guess we are about to write a paper that we will do compactifications of Caruso prime from ADS3, where one of those dimensions, y, will be adjusted. This is just really a game. You have had the statement is, so that's why I said that it's a surprise. It, the theory is more complex, has more degrees of freedom than you might think, just a scalar field in ADS2, because the propagator turned out to be highly non-polynomial and was hiding an infinite set of scalar fields. So the proper discussion is maybe three dimension, which where the third dimension has to be seen somehow, which I love is, has been integrated out. And um, if you adjust the potential, you will get that value from the, the masses. So that probably, and as we produce, we could see that we will produce that propagator in computers. So there is some evidence for this 3D picture. So just to summarize, I have time to do it, that SYK is a simple model, d equal 1. It, uh, features by local holography, although it features maybe a little bit more than by local, but I, 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 I approach it through this by local. It is defined at a critical point, but also a way. So uh, our treatment was at the critical point and also a way as perturbation. So we have two papers, but Malcolm and Stanford only talk about near critical points. So Is, uh, that there is a very interesting emergent parameterization symmetry, which really gives you that one poor degree of freedom or gravity. But even though it is one coordinate f of t, for me it's a major success because I felt that uh, in the understanding of uh, gauge degrees of indeed gauge degrees of freedom from CFT somehow was lacking. People compare observables, but where does gauge symmetry come from? Of higher spin theory or of, of string theory? Very little is known. Uh, very little insight is gotten from ADS CFT correspondence. This is uh, something, it's epsilon, or, or one, one dynamical coordinate of gravitational type. So, so, Okay, 10 pence, so 